Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 Update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for October 3rd, 2020, recorded around 3.55 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look across the tropical Atlantic right now, we do have a lot going on right now. Uh, first of all, we'll start, obviously, with our tropical storm out here, Tropical Storm Gamma. Maximum sustained winds near 70 or 75 miles per hour, moving northwest very slowly. And this is going to remain a pretty big concern for the northern Yucatan Peninsula coastline today, tomorrow, and the next several days. And then we are also watching uh, another area of disturbed weather down here that also is now dubbed Invest Area 92L, moving off towards the northwest very uh, kind of uh, briskly, and this will also have a shot for developing over the next several days. Then we also have a tropical wave with a chance of developing over here, and the remnants of Hurricane Paulette, which, yes, does have a chance at regenerating once again over the next several days. So this is very interesting. We do have a lot kind of going on, obviously, with our multiplicative tropical systems across the Atlantic. First of all, we'll take a look here at Tropical Storm Gamma. Again, sustained winds of 70 miles per hour, but could have been a brief hurricane upon landfall, and that's why there was a hurricane warning uh, that was in effect for portions of the northern Yucatan Peninsula coastline. This is now moving off towards the northwest at 9 miles per hour, expected to reemerge sometime tomorrow morning over water, and then continue to slowly drift around while weakening gradually, and then moving eventually southwest or, uh, southwesterly by the time we get into mid and later part of next week. So this is going to be very important because there's a lot of considerable uncertainty uh, in the eventual evolution of how uh, Tropical Storm Gamma actually plays out. And its uh, eventual evolution is relatively uncertain at the moment. Now, if we take a look here at the zoomed-in satellite shot over Tropical Storm Gamma, we can see that a couple of important things are ongoing. We'll kind of jump back to uh, the very beginning of this loop here, back at about 1.51 uh, this, this afternoon. And what you can see is an eye-like structure appearing here with deep convective bursts rotating around. This could have been a hurricane, a short-lived hurricane right upon landfall. The recon plane from earlier this morning did suggest that this had hurricane force flight level winds. Some of those could have easily mixed down. Now what you're starting to see once again though is more deep convective bursts to rotate around. And the storm has not really lost any of its deep convective symmetry. It's still rotating around a common core and embedded within there. You can kind of see that little donut shape. That's kind of your eye-like structure so this is maintaining itself well on land and if it can retain that moving northwestward and re-emerging sometime late tonight or early tomorrow yes this does have a chance to actually be a stronger storm than forecast uh, but there is some complicating factors that we'll talk about here in a moment now, one of the things we can kind of look to analyze the actual structure is the vorticity map here this is the 15 uh, zulu time Vorticity product, the 850 vorticity, the spinning out here about 5,000 feet off the ground. These reds and whites set your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level, and you can very clearly see that this is a very well defined structure here. These white colors indicative of very deep rotation at 5,000 feet, so in the kind of the lower levels of the atmosphere. And this will kind of be moving again northwesternly today, taking that dive over here. What we can also see is that we have a front in through here. You can kind of see some of that vorticity axis uh, kind of in this zone through here. And that is where our frontal boundary is positioned. Our, our front is kind of draped right around here across South Florida, across Central and South Florida today. And that will be lifting northward with time. And if we look back at the very wide kind of satellite perspective, we can see where that front is now starting to evict a lot of the moisture. And we talked about this, evicting moisture back across Florida. And some of the far convective elements are getting strung out from gamma and being sent across into the Gulf and into Florida. And this does have a very real prospect to bring impacts to Florida, although it is several hundred miles away. Uh, but... Obviously, flooding is a big concern, but we're not talking about the storm going there, but it's outside peripheries and associated with that cold front 
is going to bring flooding concerns in, in the entire portion of East Central Florida is under a flash or is under a flood watch uh, until tomorrow evening, Sunday evening. Now, the one thing that is going to be occurring, though, is we can very clearly see the displaced upper level anticyclone down here across the south of the storm. And the storm is now going to be getting to move in into an environment of very hostile conditions, upwards of 40 knots of wind shear, 40 to 50 knots of wind shear await in its journey. And you can very clearly see where the axis here of kind of that jet maximum associated with the front is. It's located right through there. That's our jet maximum. With uh, there are over 100 knots of shear located over portions of uh, northern Florida and the Carolinas. Uh, but along its journey, generally along this journey, it's going to be met with a very high shear environment. Now, what this is uh, ending up doing is it's causing our storm to move two different ways. Now, this is a visualization of that. This is the GFS forecast. This is the A50 vorticity map. And uh, this is the 12Z model run from uh, 8 o'clock this morning. And we can very clearly see our tropical storm, tropical storm gamma, located right down here. And we can also kind of see some of that vorticity associated with the front located in through here and some background vorticity uh, located over portions of North Florida and the Carolinas today. Now, we'll move this forward here, and this is 24 hours from now. Of course, our storm is still kind of hanging around, but you notice that it's a lot less defined here in the model field. It's not like it was previously. Now, you can also kind of see where this front is now going to be. It's now starting to lift northward. This is our cold front that's now beginning to lift northward once again. This frontal boundary is going to lift northward. It's going to start evecting, and all of that evection is going to cause this warm air, warm moist air evection across central Florida. We'll talk about those impacts in a moment, but the storm is going to start evecting northward, and as it does so, uh, to kind of give a better understanding, we'll look at the GFS uh, 200 millibar wind flow. And we can see that there's a very displaced upper level anticyclone located over uh, the South Florida Straits and the Bahamas right now uh, in about 24 hours. We also have a tropical upper tropospheric trough or a tut located over the central Atlantic. And that influence is stretching all the way down into the Caribbean as we kind of get two break off vorticity bits. Now you can see our storm after crossing the Yucatan is much weaker. It's not as well organized, about a thousand millibars. And we can also see that there's going to be some southeasterly shear because this displaced upper level low is causing an, and also this tropical upper tropospheric trough is kind of injecting that southeasterly return flow into the back of the storm. Now typically this would be a pretty good severe weather setup across portions of uh, the Gulf Coast uh, in kind of a return flow pattern like this if you had a, a very strong cold front digging through, but we don't have that thankfully. But you can very clearly see that we have southeasterly winds here at the 200 millibar winds, but in the lower levels of the atmosphere, we actually have winds that are trying to uh, kind of direct the storm off to the west a little bit. So we have westerly winds at the low levels and southeasternly flow at the mid-levels. So these are kind of two steering components that are trying to steer the storm in two different ways at the moment. Now we can see that the storm actually just kind of hangs around here. This is by 72 hours from now. By Tuesday, our storm is still hanging around here in the Bay of Campeche. We still have the southeast, uh, kind of east-southeast return flow, displaced upper-level anticyclone over the Bahamas, and uh, to the east of Florida, this uh, trough that's digging in across here right now with the jet max like that, another upper level low approaching the Lesser Antilles. And we can very clearly see that our storm is just kind of hanging around. And the pattern really doesn't change all that much. We still get this displaced upper level low look, upper level low here. Uh, we still get a very displaced look. Now, if you had a tropical cyclone here, be a very favorable environment for intensification all else given but you have southeasterly winds here kind of east southeast winds uh on the storm and it just does not want to let up so uh, thankfully it seems right now that the intensity of gamma might be limited in scope 
But we obviously saw that none of the models predicted rapid intensification to almost hurricane strength before landfall. So it's entirely possible that this might be stronger, it might move somewhere else. The bottom line is this is going to remain a very potent rainfall threat for the northern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula over the next several days and even into the Bay of Campeche as time goes on. So this entire area that I'm highlighting here in red has a legitimate shot at very heavy rainfall over the next several days. And this is going to be something to monitor just besides the wind threat is going to be something to monitor for the heavy rain and mudslide and flash flooding potential as we go throughout the next several days. Now the other concern here is the flooding potential for Florida and yet another tropical wave. We'll talk about the flooding potential first of all. Uh, we can very clearly see here, this is the GFS forecast, the 700 to 400 millibar relative humidity product. And the brown here, that's all your dry air separated by your green moist air, uh, your, your moist air in green. And you can very clearly see where the front is right now, positioned over the Bay of Campeche and over Florida, stretching all the way up like that. Now this is our frontal boundary. It's kind of dipped all the way southward and you can very clearly see we have this very dry air mass on one side associated with a very moist tropical air mass, a uh, tropical air mass to the south of it. So these are kind of two competing factors. Now we talked about over the last several days that because of this front, there's this frontal boundary is also a gradient of wind direction and shear. So there's a large magnitude of shear just ahead and behind this front. So you can very clearly see that we have this moisture axis that's stretched all the way out here across uh, South Florida. Now this is 8 o'clock this morning. We'll bump this out here to the another you know, 18 hours from now by tomorrow morning. We have a very potent air mass that's sitting over South and Central Florida right now, lifting northward. It's affecting northward with time. And this is going to cause a very heavy rainfall potential to set up across Florida. And rainfall amounts could exceed 8 inches in isolated locations, especially under any training bands. So this is going to, to kind of force uh, any deep convection to kind of be sat over a particular area for a decent amount of time. We can also start to see here that dry air is going to start to work its way into Tropical Storm Gamma and that may might actually help to kind of simmer the storm. You can see here by the next 48 hours our front is still kind of positioned across here but now because this is a cyclonic flow and it's been a cyclonic flow forever now since we've developed that circulation but that the dry air now is getting wrapped around into the circulation. And with time, this is going to have it, it's kind of rendezvous with our storm. Now, eventually it does develop more of a moist pocket in the atmosphere. We can see that here uh, by five days from now, it mixes out that dry air as the front really retreats. And you get a relatively moist pocket of air surrounding the Gulf of Mexico. And then what we also have happening is we can see this other tropical wave right here uh, in the southwestern Caribbean near Jamaica. Now this will be pulling northward through the next several days and might find itself in the southwestern Caribbean or Gulf uh, within the next uh, you know, couple of days or so. Now, a lot is going to depend once again on what eventually is the outcome of the resulting uh, tropical upper troposphere trough. Now, if we go back out here, uh, this is 24 hours from now, and uh, we'll go out to hour 48 here. You can kind of see that right now, this is our trough right here, our tropical upper troposphere trough. We have our area of our upper level anticyclone, but we also have winds here coming out of the southeasternly direction. These are the trade winds down here, but also the upper level flows moving roughly at the same position. Now, if we move this out later in time, this is by our 96 to uh, 102, we get a very well-developed and established upper level anticyclone across the Gulf of Mexico with a very uh, potent kind of moist pocket in the atmosphere. So this does have a chance to actually uh, strengthen. Maybe, you know, this does have a chance to get better organized once it enters the, the southwestern Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico later this week. 
And it is my belief that we will probably see yet another tropical depression or storm form out of this. And by the way, the next name would be Tropical Storm Delta. Uh, so we are firmly entrenched with the Greek alphabet. We can see here from the official Hurricane Center forecast, given 92L, a 60% chance as it moves generally west-northwest over the next several days, Again, the biggest threat right now, the biggest concern for me going forward is going to be for Jamaica in the western part of Cuba. Immediately, we're starting to think for some gusty winds, squally conditions, heavy rainfall, mudslides, flooding. That is going to be your biggest concern as we progress through the next several days for Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba. Uh, that's going to be your biggest concern. I don't see this developing into a major hurricane down here in the Caribbean but it is something to monitor as time progresses through the next several days, all right? So that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.